choice to do that. I want everybody in this place today just to make a choice, to lift your hands, magnify and clap your hands, whatever you've got to do, because I'm in the house of the Lord today to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We made a choice to be here. Now let's make a choice to magnify him. Come on, everybody, lift your voice in this place today and let's praise the Lord.
presence of the Lord is here. I said the presence of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. I can feel him moving on the inside. So come and enter in and cast your cares on him. He'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing. Because when the Lord steps in, he brings everything you need. Healing, power, and victory. It's all up to you. Whatever you need him to do, just trust him and believe him, and by faith you will receive it. And I can feel the presence of the Lord. And I wish somebody would say, and I'm going to get my blessing right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to get my blessing right now. Oh, hear me now. The Holy Ghost is in this place. He's moving. That's what you feel. It ain't hype. This ain't no show. You ain't in a club. Jesus is here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. 
There's liberty. Free at last. Free at last. Great God Almighty, I'm free at last. The bondage I once felt is gone. Today's your day to be set free. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated for a moment. It's time to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. And uh, we uh, uh, regret that we had to miss our business meeting on Wednesday night. And we will make that up. But it just won't be this Wednesday because I ain't giving up Bible study another time. Amen. I stayed so long at the coffee shop yesterday. I was, a, I was really, this is no joke. I kept looking. It was getting crowded in there, Brother David. And uh, I kept looking around. I thought, how long till somebody comes and taps me on the shoulder and says, Sir, if you stay here any longer, you're going to have to pay rent. True story. I think I was there six hours. But I got to reading and I got to typing and I typed up. I ain't going to tell you all how much because you won't come back. But I want you to know the Lord is blessing the River Bend Pentecostals in unprecedented ways, spiritually, financially, emotionally. Healing is coming. I wish everybody in this room could have been in elements a while ago to feel the presence of the Lord as he begins to heal. It's a beautiful thing when that stuff starts floating to the surface so it can be fixed. Amen. How many are glad to be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost? To be cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We can use GiveLify. We, uh, do we have text to give active yet today? She don't want us to give it yet. All right. We, we do have a new program that we've purchased um, that will be active. Uh, we're going to be able to do attendance, send out uh, uh, wish you were here, we missed you. And uh, we also have a text to give option. We have a phone number that you just text, put your information in, and you can give your tithe and offerings via text. So, but give Lafay today uh, on PayPal or uh, at riverbendpentecostals.com. Then, of course, there's you can send it in via mail. And we do have more and more folks doing that all the time. I've said this before, but I'll say it for the benefit of those that perhaps were not here. This is only like a fourth of our congregation that you see. We got a couple hundred folks that watch us regularly online from all over the country. Amen. And we're glad that you're here with us this morning from wherever you may be. And the Lord has moved on some of them to begin to support the church financially, and it has been a blessing. Amen. We let you know that the, the pans on the outside, the gold-plated pans, are for tithing. The inner pans here, the wood grain pans, are for offering. And I'd like you to stand with me, if you would, as we give our offering declaration, this prayer of faith. And uh, I promise one of these nights we're just going to have a testimony service for everybody who has been not only blessed, but I'm telling you, I can't tell everybody's business, but I wish I could. Because if you don't like this prayer, I just want to give some testimonies to let you know what's happened to our faith and what God has been able to do. I'm talking about people getting raises, people getting promotions, people getting new jobs right in the middle of the pandemic. It's happening over and over and over. Sometimes people, hear me right now, people are picking up their phone and folks are just offering them jobs right out of the blue without them even applying for it. God is working. Put the prayer up there. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaking together, running over. I am a tither and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, 
sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and served in God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Come bring your tithe and offerings. If you've already given on Givelify, just walk around wave it, folks. Smile at them. Tell them it's good to see them here. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray. Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would be in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name.
beginning and the end the Lord's been speaking to me and I've heard from him and I know I've heard from the Lord and I need to speak to someone for just just a moment you, you, you see everybody dancing around you you see the little kids raising their arms up and you you don't comprehend it they've just surrendered they've given up control that's, that, that is why in Genesis chapter 1, the first scripture of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, meaning before human knowledge, before human wisdom, before human control, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, here it is, the Spirit of God moved. You see, the Lord wants, He likes to move where you're not in control. He likes to move when you get out and you have to just step out. Jesus, I need you. I was talking with Katie last night. She was like, I'm, I watch you praise and worship. And she's like, you don't have any rhythm. You can't even clap to the beat. And I was just like, I don't even attempt to anymore, amen. But I know I don't have to, I don't have to feel a thing when I get up here and I lift my hands and I begin to jump. It's okay. It's okay to run around. It's okay to look dumb. I don't care what anybody thinks. I need Jesus. Oh my, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. 
Can you just lift them up before we go to prayer? Come on, Jesus, we need you. Say it. Jesus, I need you. My family needs you. My situation needs you. And he can do it. Can we do prayer just a little bit different? If you need a miracle, if you need healing, I just ask you to come forward. I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but I know he's going to meet you. He's going to meet you right here. If you, if you would come forward, everybody that would, we're going to lay hands on one another. We have the oil. We have the Holy Ghost. And we have the name of Jesus. We have the power and the authority. Just surrender. Give up all control. All control. Everything that's holding you back that maybe week after week, month after month, you see people jumping, you see people shouting, and you're wondering, Lord, when are you going to do it for me? This is the day. This is the day. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Men, just... Let's not miss a single person, everybody that comes forward. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. All right. Y'all can play. Jesus is in this room. Oh. 
tell somebody right now, if you've ever wondered what it was like for the high priest to go in in the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, I want to tell you right now that this is what it was like for one man. But we get to experience it for ourselves today. We get to see it in person. We get to feel it in person, Brother Ronnie. We get to have what the high priest had. There was something that day that was released into all the world. And we're still reaping the harvest of it today. Sister Scarlett, I want to go ahead and apologize to you right now, but what I gave you this morning ain't where the Lord's taking me, so... I want to tell somebody this morning that I feel like I've been sent on a mission straight from God to tell somebody that's been sitting on the edge, to tell somebody that doesn't know which way that they want to go, to tell somebody that has heard about a better way to live, that today is your day, that today you can get your miracle in this house. If you've been riding the fence and you're worried about what people might say about you for coming to the house of God, I want to tell you right now, there's two things that you need to be worried about. Not what anybody else has to say, but what Jesus has to say. It's either going to be well done or it's going to be depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I want to tell somebody in this house this morning that today your miracle can happen in this place. Today God is going to show up and he is going to show out in this place and he's going to fulfill what you came to the house of God for if you believe. I want to let somebody know that Jesus is in this place. This is not hype. This is not man-made. This is something that came from heaven. This is something that's going to change your life and you can have it here today. You can have it today. Today is your day. I wish somebody would get that down in their spirit. I wish somebody would get that down in their heart and truly believe that God's got something in store for you today. Amen. It don't matter what your past is. It don't matter where you've been, where you come from, what color you are. It don't matter what you look like, what you smell like. It doesn't matter who you are. God is no respecter of persons. And this is for everybody. This gospel is for everybody. This message is for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, who you've been, where you've been, how far you've gone. One prayer from a sincere heart is all you need to change your life forever. That's all you need. Got some scriptures I want to start with this morning. you want to follow along, we're going to be in Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 35. It says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. I want to preach to you this morning on this subject. What hinders me? You can be seated if you'd like. Brother Larry, would you pray for me, please? Amen. We'll give you a little bit of a backstory from where I'm coming from. If I'm sure Brother GL probably told you all this is going to be kind of like part two of what he preached last Sunday. But it just, it just goes hand in hand. It just kind of picks up where he left off. If you remember from last week, we hear about the deacon Philip. 
And he's gone down into Samaria and preaching and having church. And I can just imagine that it's kind of like what we were seeing here this morning. All over all the little churches and the little villages in Samaria, everywhere that he went, they were having revival. They were, he was preaching the word to the people and they were receiving it and they, they were getting baptized. And, and then Peter and John had to get in on the action and they came in and they, they prayed for them and they started receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then all of a sudden in the middle of this revival, the Lord speaks to Philip and he says, Hey, if you want to follow along, this is starting in verse 26. He says, I want you to go south on the road from Jerusalem. Jerusalem into Gaza and there it's desert so Philip in the middle of this revival God picks him out and he says hey I want you to go now Philip he's out on the road and he's traveling you know they only have a couple ways to get around he, he might have been able to get a chariot he was probably most likely on foot but he's going and he's doing the work of the Lord and he's listening and he's tuned in and, and he, he obeyed what God said to do the spirit the Spirit spoke to him, Sister Nadine, and said, I want you to go. And he left the revival that he was in. He left the great things that were going on to go out. He didn't know why he was going at this point. And then all of a sudden, he's out there, he's walking, and he's walking, and he's in the desert, and he's walking. And I'm sure he's tired, and I'm sure he's thirsty. And then all of a sudden, he sees a guy. And the Spirit speaks to him and said, that's him. He said, that's him right there. He said, I want you to go up to him. He said, I want you to go up to him, and I want you to to just see what he's doing. He went up to him and he sees that this man, there's a man sitting there in a chariot and he can overhear him. He's sitting there, he's reading a book. He's reading the prophet Esaias or Isaiah as we may know it today. And he's sitting there and he's, he's talking about it. And I want to tell you about this man. This man's from Ethiopia. If you know anything about a map from the best of my knowledge of the research I've done, this man traveled 1,600 miles in a horse and buggy. One way trip, 53 days to get there. I want, I want to tell you about a man that had some faith. I want to tell you about a man that heard the word and that he had enough faith. He said, I want to go. I got to get there. He said, I've got to have some of that. He said, I've got to have what they have. I've got to go. He said, he heard about this God. He heard about this God that performs these miracles for his people. He heard about this God that, that parts the sea, that parts the waters. He heard about this God that, that sets up and he governs his people and he loves his people. He doesn't just judge and condemn them, but he loves his people. And he said, I've got to go check that out. I've got to get to the church. I've got to get to the house of God. But there was one thing holding him back. There was one thing that was hindering him. And that's, he was a eunuch. Now, for those of y'all that don't know what that means, I'm going to try to keep it G-rated. He had some things removed that keeps some spirits from rising up, if you'll let me put it that way, later in life. Let's, uh, let some things stay calm whenever he gets around ladies. There's no emotions that rise. There's, there's safety in being what he is. But this man... I want you to think about it. He heard the word. He heard about this God. He heard and wanted to worship. And he drove in this horse about 1,600 miles, Brother David, just to go to church to sit in the parking lot. He could not go in because of his condition that he was in. He could not go in because he was incomplete. He could not go in because there was something about him that made him not whole. And he could not enter in. This man drove all that way just to sit in the parking lot. And he was probably content with that, but there was something that got down inside of him. He just sat there. He sat on the, on the outskirts. He sat in the parking lot and he watched everybody else get their blessing. He watched everybody else go in the church and get their miracle. He watched everybody else give their sacrifice. He watched everybody else go in and get what he thought he wanted. He sat there in the, in the outside in the parking lot in his chariot and he sat there and he sat there and he sat there and then you know what? All of a sudden something clicked. He said, I bet there's something more in this for me. So he bought and had a copy of the word. He had a copy of the written word and he went and he was sitting there reading it. And he was reading it. And he was reading it. And he was reading it. And then he come across something that really stuck out to him. Sister Heidi, take me to verse 32, please. 
It says, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. Verse 33. It says, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from this earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Is it of himself or is it some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and he began at the same scripture. And he preached unto him Jesus. Now I could just imagine how this is going on. I could just imagine, you know, you have Philip here. He's, he's coming out of this revival and then he's all of a sudden he's going down this road and he don't know why. He don't know why he had to take this step of faith and start traveling, but he went down to this place and there was one man, there was one man that was sitting there that had something down inside of him that said, I've got to get to God. There was something down inside of him that said, I have to see what this is for myself. And he got to reading and he got to figuring things out for himself and he said, I know that there's something more for me, Brother Cody. He said, I know that there's something more than this. He said, I'm not just content with sitting in the parking lot anymore and letting people go in and get their blessing. He said, I'm not content just sitting here and seeing everybody else get their miracle. He said, I've got to get something for myself. He said, but I don't understand it. And then all of a sudden, through a miracle situation, there's this preacher, a deacon named Philip that's going along the way in the spirit of the Lord. He just comes to him and he says, all right, that's your man right there. He said, that's the man I need you to go speak to. And Philip went up to him and he said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, no. He said, how can I understand unless somebody tells me? He said, how can I understand what this is? I don't know what it's talking about. I don't know who this man is in this scripture, but I know that he's for me. He said, I know that there's something else about this. And I could just imagine, I could just imagine what was going over Philip. He said, he said, I can explain it to you. And the eunuch, he invited him up into his chariot. He said, I want you to come sit with me. And then we read it just a second ago. He said, then Philip opened his mouth, beginning at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. See, according to the old law, according to the old tradition and the old way of doing things, there, there was no way that this guy could go into the temple. <clears throat> See, there was no way that this guy could go in. He was incomplete. He didn't have everything that he needed. He was different. He was an outcast. He was somebody that the world looked down on. He was somebody that didn't have it all together. And he wanted to go to church, but he couldn't. Somebody was holding him back. Old tradition, for the sake of tradition, was holding him back. There was things that were in his life that allowed him to not get what he needed from God. And I want to ask you this morning, what hinders me? What hinders me from getting what God has for me? What, what's keeping me away? What's keeping me out of the church? What's keeping me away from the gospel? What's keeping me out of the sanctuary in the safe place? What's keeping me away from the love of God? Philip, coming out of this revival, I'm sure he's fired up. He's, he's got everything in his, in his heart that he needs. He's full of the Holy Ghost. He's full of a good report. People love him. People say that he's a good guy. And then all of a sudden, he comes up on somebody that's hungry, and he's ready to expound the gospel unto this man. And he says, beginning at the same scripture, he preached unto him Jesus. Come here, Brother Seth. going to be my eunuch for a while, okay? So, I come up on this man. I'm going to be Philip today. We're traveling. Philip gets up in the chariot, and we're traveling a little way. He's just talking. We're having a good old chat about Jesus. This man's hungry. He needs something from me, and I've got the answers. I know what the answer is to all of his problems. I know what he needs to hear. You know what you need to hear? Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about what he did. Let me tell you about who he was. You see, there was this man. There was this man that went around and he was performing all these miracles. And he got a few followers with him. And he got a few people with him in his little circle. And he was trying to, to tell them about what's going to come down the road. And you see, there was this man that, that his name was Jesus. And he performed all these miracles. And he, he came. He came so he could save his people. And you know who that is? It's us. That's us. That's us. They're traveling. They're traveling. And he's preaching to him. Jesus, he says, there's this man. 
There's this man that performs these miracles. There's this man that teaches his people and he loves them. And he goes out and he's gathered up these disciples and he goes, he goes around teaching and preaching and telling a different story. We have, we have the law. We got the law of the prophets. Everybody didn't like Jesus' teaching. They said that it went against it. But no, I want to tell you today that all he did was come to fulfill that law. You see, there was, there was traditions that kept the eunuch out, but there was Jesus that came that said, I am the law. I'm, re I'm ready to fulfill the law. There is Jesus that came that said, I'm going to be here for everybody. It don't matter what you've been. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter who you are, how far you've gone. I'm here. I'm coming to save my people. And that means all the Jews. That means all the Samaritans. That means all the Gentiles. That means all the eunuchs. That means everybody and everybody. It don't matter how much sin you've had in your life. It don't matter if you've been in church and then you've walked away he said I've came to save my people Jesus was the guy that came to fulfill the law he was the guy that came to minister he was the guy that came to save his people he was God wrapped in the flesh he was God wrapped in the flesh he was the one that came oh, he was the lamb he came to save sinners he came to save everybody One minute, one minute they were praising him. One minute they were laying their coats down. They were waving palm leaves at him, praising him, giving him glory. And then a week later they were saying crucify him. I could just imagine what Philip was telling this guy. He said, I, I got to tell you about this guy. You see, I was there when it happened. I was there. <clears throat> Jesus was hanging on that cross. It was about the sixth hour of the day. All of a sudden, things started to go dark. About three hours later, he cried out and he gave up the ghost. And then all of a sudden, there were storms, there was darkness, there was an earthquake that came. And then the veil that was inside the temple, it was ripped in two from the top to the bottom. And it released what we feel today into this house. And it, oh, come on, somebody. I wish somebody would just praise God for the gift that he has given us. <clears throat> You see, there was something that happened that day whenever that veil was ripped. You see what I said earlier? There was one man one day a year that got to go in and experience this. But whenever that veil was ripped, it released that into all the world. And whenever we come into a place like this and we gather together, we're feeling the presence of God. Whenever God would come down into the Holy of Holies and rest upon the mercy seat, that's what the high priest got to feel. But no, whenever we come together, we are the temple now. We are the Holy of Holies. We are the one that, that carries the mercy seat. We are the mercy seat of God now. And I just want to tell somebody in this house. I just want to tell somebody that Jesus... It's for you. Jesus is for you. Jesus. See, he expounded to the eunuch who this Jesus was. I could just imagine. He just came out of this revival. He was there when he seen the beginning of the New Testament church. He was there whenever he seen it happen, whenever those cloven tongues, like as a fire came into that room when they were all in one accord and they began to speak in a heavenly language. They began to speak in those tongues as the Spirit gave it utterance. And there was people all around that were mocking them. There was people all around that were saying, these guys are drunk with new wine. And then Peter's like, no, these are not drunk as ye suppose. All right. But then he gets in there. He starts preaching to him. He says, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what we're experiencing here today. No longer do you have to stand outside the temple. No longer do you have to just come and wait in the parking lot. No longer do you just have to come and see what everybody else is getting. But today, today you can have what you came for. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. Jesus came to save you from it. It doesn't matter where you've been. Jesus came to save you from it. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. Jesus came to save you from it. He said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all sinners would come to repentance. I wish that somebody would hear the word today. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying today that lets somebody know that what, wherever you're at in life, that Jesus is here in this place for you today. doesn't matter. 
where you think you stand. It doesn't matter who you think you are. It doesn't matter what you think people think about you. When you come into the presence of God, all that stuff has to fade away. All that stuff has to leave. All that stuff has to go. All that stuff just has to run in the presence of God. But I want to let you know that there was somebody that day that wanted a little something more for themselves and they were reading the word. And they said, I've got to have more. And Philip got up in that chariot and as they were riding, he preached unto him Jesus. And as he was telling him, as he was telling him what Peter preached that day, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was telling him all that. And he said, and the promise is unto you and your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And I want to tell somebody that's you. And whenever he said that, whenever he was saying that to the eunuch, he said that you. No longer do you have to sit outside. No longer do you have to just wish. No longer do you have to want, but you can have it. And then all of a sudden, he said, there's some water. He said, there's some water. It's my time, Brother GL. There's some water. He said, I think it's time that I be baptized. He said, what does hinder me? And I want to tell somebody today in this house, what is hindering you in this house today from obeying the Scripture? I want to ask somebody in this house today, what is it that's holding you back? What is it that is standing in your way from being fulfilled into the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is standing in your way? Is it your past? Is it what people might think about you? Is it what a spouse may think about you for wanting to come and enjoy what this is? Is it somebody in your life that you respect that tries to make fun of you for trying to be holy, for wanting to do right? Is it somebody that's just trying to step in your way? Is it somebody that's just talking bad about you, calling you a hypocrite because you're coming to church wanting to try to do right? Well, I want to tell you right now that this Jesus that I've been telling about, this Jesus that Philip spoke to the eunuch about, it's for a day like today whenever there's a group of people together that need Jesus. It's for a day like today whenever there are people that have a past that want to come together and worship and try to do right and get set on the right path. It's for a day like today whenever there are people that want their life changed. It's for a day like today when people are here in like precious faith that say, I need something new in my life. There's something more for me, Brother Terrence. There's something more. There's something more. There's hungry people in this place. It says, and they went on their way. They came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. That's it. He went on his way rejoicing, church, because he had found what he had been searching for. Yeah. He had found the word in the scripture. He obeyed the word of God, and then it happened. He said, I see it. I see it for myself. You explained it to me. And I heard the preacher. I heard the word. And then all of a sudden, I've got enough faith rising up in me that's going to be obedient. I'm going to listen to what the word says. And then I'm going to get what the word says I can't have. You see, I may be incomplete. I may not be whole. I may be somebody that's an outcast. But you know what? Jesus says, I love you. Jesus says that you can have everything that I have for you. Jesus says that I'm here for you to save you from yourself to save you from your sins, to save you from this world. Praise team, y'all can come on up here if you would like. There's a lot of things out in this world that are drawing us one way or the other. It may be people that we love. It's things that we see. It's things that, that are going on in the world. People are scared. People are frantic. It, it's any a number of things. But there's one man that can take care of it, and that's Jesus. Amen. There's one man that can comfort you, and that's Jesus. There's one man that can save you from this, and that's Jesus. 
And I want to tell somebody this morning that he loves you. He really loves you. It doesn't matter how bad you think you've been. He came and he died for your worst moment. And I just want to let somebody know that he loves you. I know I keep saying it, but I think that it's eventually going to sink in with somebody. But I want to let you know this morning that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You see, somebody told this eunuch about God. Somebody had to teach him. And he said, all right. He said, I believe, I believe something's going on here. I've got to get to the temple. But when he got there, all he could do was sit in the parking lot. He got there and he heard and he said, no, there's something more to this. And then he was sitting there on his way back home. He turned around, he was on his way back home and he stopped and he was searching out the scriptures and he saw something. And he said, I think there's more. I think something's missing. I think something's different here. And then there was a preacher come along that told him about it. It's kind of crazy how that this message came about. It's been three weeks ago, Brother Larry, we had our focused prayer night. It was our, our fifth Monday night of the month. And Brother Larry gave us our topics and we're dispersed about the church and we're praying. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting right here on this second row. And I kneel down to pray. As soon as I close my eyes, and this happens from time to time, the Lord showed me something. I was in the church in this vision. And I looked back on the wall, and there was doors right there, and they had these big circle windows. Never seen a place like this before, so it may not even have been here where, where I was at in this vision. And then all of a sudden, I seen people just looking in the windows, and there was people that were just kind of, you know, putting their hands up on the windows, just scraping, trying to get in. They were trying to get into the church. They were trying to get in, but the doors were locked. There was something that was holding them back from getting in. There was something that was keeping them out. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I wonder what it is. I, I, the door's unlocked, but these people can't get in. They're sitting out there. They're screaming, and they're crying, and I can see them. They're pushing into the doors and into the windows, and it was people that I knew in the community that were in these windows. It wasn't God that was keeping them out. It was their own thoughts about themselves that was keeping them out. It was the things that they think people were thinking about them that keeps them out. It was being called a hypocrite that keeps them out. Nobody wants to be a hypocrite, Brother Gio, and it's not going to happen here. The only people that come here are the ones that want to get closer to God. The only people that come into this church are the ones that are hungry, the ones that want something from heaven, the ones that want a miracle, the ones that want to be changed. Those are the kind of people. Those are the kind of people that are here. There's not people that talk about one another. There's not people that bring up your past. There's not people that want to look down upon you. But everybody loves everybody. And that's how I want to believe in this place today. I want to tell you Jesus is in this place. And there is love in this place. There is everything you need in this place today. And I want to open those doors. I want to open them so that, we can come, so that people can come in and they can feel that love. But they've got to let go of what's hindering them. So I want to ask you today, what's hindering you? What's hindering me? There's people out there all over that are in church this morning and they have good intentions about God. They have good intentions about their faith. They have good intentions about what they're doing. But here's what the word tells me that's not preached in a lot of churches this morning. Take me to Acts 2.38. I don't know how to lay it out any plainer than what Peter did, Brother Gio. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In verse 39. For the promise is unto you and your children and to all them that are afar off 
even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I read that, that tells me he's for everybody. That tells me that he's for the addict. He's for the oppressed. He's for the depressed. He's for the ones that think they're not good enough. He's for the ones that are, that are haughty. He's for the ones that have the big ego. He's for the ones that feel like that they're not good enough. He's for the ones that feel like they're cast down. He's for the ones that society has thrown away. He's for everybody. And you can have that. You can have that. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It only matters what Jesus says about you. It doesn't matter what people may say about you for trying to do better. If somebody's going to make fun of you for being closer to God, they need to be at the altar with you. There's people all over that have good intentions about their faith. People all over this morning that have good intentions. Whenever I think of faith, I like to think of it as this long roadway that I'm walking on. There's a finish line somewhere. But I want to tell you this morning, as you're all standing, good intentions aren't going to get you anywhere but lost. But obedience to the Word of God is going to take you all the way home. You can thank Brother Garrison for this one. Believe it or not, but yesterday we were in the car. Yesterday we were in the car. Him and Paige were in the front seats, and me and Meredith were in the back. We'd been going and doing some wedding stuff for them. We come up to a train track, and there's a train driving by. We're about three cars back. We're sitting there. We're sitting there, and we can see the end coming. We can see it right there. Then all of a sudden, this car gets impatient and decides to turn off. And they missed it. The end was right there. They were about to cross over to the other side, and then they turned away. But I want to tell somebody right now that today doesn't have to be that day for you. You can make a decision to come to God in this place. If you repent... You're just one prayer away from being fulfilled in God again. You're one prayer away from being in His good standing again for being able to receive that grace. I just want to ask you a couple questions this morning. I've shared the gospel with you. I've shared the message of salvation with you. I've shared that it's for everybody. For those of you that's on the fence, for those that that are trying to make a decision of do I want to be in this or do I want to run the risk of being made fun of, do I want to run the risk of people talking about me, I've shared the gospel with you. What are you going to do with it? And what hinders me? altars are open.
What a feeling. Everything about this is just great. As you're making your way back to your seats, uh, before I really say anything else, I got to let the devil know that I'm still here. Is there anybody in the house today that it, you got to let him know I'm here? Don't know what you went through this week. Don't know what's been going on, but I'm here. Don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I, I, that don't matter. Brother Blake, that don't matter right now. What yesterday doesn't matter. But I'm here right now. The devil couldn't keep me. He couldn't stop me. I'm here on my own two feet. Blessed. Thankful. And I just got to let him know. That I'm still here. Amen. Brother Richard, what an anointing on that word. Uh, there's a reason everything happens. What we ended up teaching on in class this morning, which our pastors kind of gave it to me because I felt like the Lord just did not give me anything. No matter all week I've been praying and thinking. And I even got a couple of things together and the Lord was just like, don't teach that. It ain't for right now. And dad, while I wasn't even feeling good or anything, told me, teach. He said, when you struggle, when you don't have anything to teach, teach salvation. So I just taught a Bible study. Just went through the Bible study. We taught the scriptures. We said the same scriptures you preached about. We was going over and then confirmation from that. But while Brother Richard was preaching, uh, the Lord quickened something to my mind. And instantly, while the Lord was still, I was still thinking it, Brother Larry leaned over to me and said, hey, remember that message by Brother Graham? And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. How the Lord confirms things. But Brother Graham preached a message, and a while back I, I watched it, and you talked about powerful. It goes right along with what Brother Richard just preached about. But what happens to the spotted lamb? We, you, Brother David, we learned so much all throughout the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when they did the sacrificial offerings and stuff. We learn about how the only sacrifices that were made to be killed on the altar had to be perfect. Any lamb that was perfect, you had to go through each. It was a job to go through them. And if they were perfect, they were able to be sacrificed. But Brother Graham's message was titled, What Happens to the Spotted Lamb? What happens to the one that don't make the cut? What happens to the one that's imperfect, maybe has a leg shorter than the other, Maybe has a spot that doesn't look good. Maybe has been through some things. Maybe he's got some flaws. What happens to that lamb? And I, I believe that it's meant to be said today that that lamb gets to live. The lamb that's not perfect. The lamb that was, that's been through some things. The lamb that's been through hell. The lamb that doesn't look as good as other people. The lamb that has a past. The lamb that has been addicted. The lamb that has had a broken family. The lamb that has been through some problems in their life, that has been addicted to some drugs, alcohol, that has made some mistakes, that has caused their own problems, that lamb gets to live. The only lamb that was made perfect has already died. He made that sacrifice on the cross so that we may live. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise that we got some imperfect lambs, we got some problems, we got some people that are just plain messed up, but we get to live. We get a second chance. We get another day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Man. Man, what the devil tries to do, just 
bites him in the back because it, it, the Lord just makes it better. The Lord takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for good. The same sword that killed Goliath was Goliath's sword. Amen. The devil can't, the devil can't tear us down. He can't, he can't do nothing. He's got no power. You mentioned I was telling Sister Scarlett this morning, there's so much power in the name of Jesus, you just speak it and the devil flees. When Legion came, he automatically acknowledged and started pleading with the Lord because he knew what was going to happen. The devil already knows what the end is. He, he knows what the back of the Bible says. Right. Amen. We just got to start believing it for ourselves. That, yeah, I messed up. I've come from some problems. I've made some mistakes. I'm imperfect, but I get to live because of that. I get a second chance to do what's right because of my problems. I'm going to be made powerful because of my circumstance, because of my past. Because of my everything that I did in my life before is going to propel me into what I'm going to be. The devil has no power, no authority. Amen. We want to remember that there's one hour of prayer tomorrow evening at 6.30 here at the church. Um, church cleaning this week is team number one, Sister Betty and Sister Michelle. And when using GiveLify PayPal, please specify what it's for and how much. Um, you know, put in a memo what if you're giving an offering for a certain thing or whatever. Secret Sisters drawing is next Sunday, March 6th. The Facebook contest, we want to reiterate this every week. Anybody that shares our service for each service will be put in a drawing for $25. And after March 9th, all of those names are going to go into a bigger drawing for $100. So we want to continue to do that. I, I will say... We're seeing crazy blessings from just a, a click of a button. Because there's tons of people watching these services, but the more we share them, the more it gets out there. It's taking the whole gospel to the whole world, and we're seeing revival come from it. On Sunday, March the 13th, we will have only one service at 2 o'clock, and it's going to be out there on the Mississippi Riverfront here in New Madrid. And this is Daylight Savings Day is the reason we're doing this. But I believe, I believe that it's going to be Talk about a revival. It's, Brother Richard, one of them dreams yeah. is to be out there in the whole community. People will be like down the road, man, I heard something. I heard some singing, felt the spirit, and they're just going to come walking up. People are going to get the Holy Ghost. I believe it. Yeah. Anybody else believe that? Yeah. Amen. Is that too big to believe? Yeah. Southeast Missouri camp meeting is coming up March 10th at 7 p.m. and the 11th at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. And uh, our pastor is going to be speaking the daytime service. I believe it's on the 11th, isn't it? So we want to try to support him. But most of all, support yourself by being there. March 18th is the Just for Youth rally. Uh, that location hasn't been determined yet, but we will announce that as soon as it's made known. Um, ladies' night is a paint party. Friday, March 25th at 6 p.m. There is a $25 fee to come in. But that's going to be a good time. I'm glad that we have, we got so much going on. Like I said, the devil can't do anything. Mamma? Yes, ma'am. Let's, let's do that right now. If we all, can we all stand? Let's all take her in need right now. Lord... God, I, I believe believing that you can do anything. I've seen it done. I've seen miracles. We just spoke about it. We've been seeing miracles. I'm believing there's some miracles even today. God, and this may be one of them. But God, I've got faith enough to believe that you can. we can heal the sick by our prayers and mention in the name of Jesus. God, and we don't even have to be there in person to lay hands. But I believe that the same power of the Holy Ghost that is here, that can go on in Sister Teresa's body, and that it can heal her in the name of Jesus. And not only heal her, but take away every pain. That it can restore her body. Let it be better than it ever has been. God, and that there's a testimony that comes from that. God, and that we see things done. And that she sees it done. And that faith is built because of this. I'm believing for it in the name of Jesus. God, and I'm giving you praise for it in advance. Because I'm believing it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Was there any, well, I know we have some birthdays. Any other birthdays and anniversaries?
this past week. Several. Amen. All right, let's sing to the. Everybody can be seated, except for the birthdays. We'll sing to the birthdays first. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday. We can all stand. We're going to end this service in prayer. Amen. Lord, God, I pray that not just the message, not just the feeling, but that the roots will stay in our hearts and in our minds. God, let us leave this place realizing that I can do this, that I can endure till the end, that I can see my way into victory. God, I pray that we will start seeing salvation and that we can preach salvation and witness salvation and minister out into this lost world. God, I praise you. I pray you keep safety on us. God, until the next time, in the name of Jesus, amen. Shake a visitor's hand, let you know you love them. Let them know you love them, and we'll see you tomorrow night, hopefully.